Hi students, in this topic we are going to discuss about a transistor AM modulator. So first we will discuss about the circuit diagram. So let us draw the circuit diagram of a transistor AM modulator. So as the name implies, first we need a transistor. Transistor is a symbol. So a transistor is a three terminal device. You have a base, emitter and collector. Okay, now in the emitter you will have an emitter resistance RE and you have a, a, a CE, a capacitor. So this is your RE. Now you have a collector resistance RC here. This is connected to plus VCC and here you will have ground. Now in the base, you will have the input capacitor C in and your signal. Here you will have the carrier signal. So this is your input capacitor C in. Now here you will have the load capacitor that is CC coupling capacitor and here is the load resistance RL so this is the load resistor now we have to form the voltage divider bias so you have two resistance for the voltage divider bias R1 and R2 this end is grounded so this is the circuit diagram. Now you have to give the input signal in this emitter circuit. This is the audio signal applied and here you will apply the carrier signal. So this is your ES and here you will apply the carrier signal EC. Okay, so we have two resistances, voltage divider resistances R1 and R2. C in is the input coupling capacitor cc is the output coupling capacitor ce is the bypass capacitor to bypass the signal current to the ground and then so uh, this is the collector resistance rc so that's about the different resistances and capacitors that we use it here in this circuit and rl is the load resistance okay now let us discuss about the working. The circuit is essentially a common emitter amplifier, CE amplifier circuit. Then you will study transistor and study the unit transistor. Then you will discuss about a CE amplifier circuit. This particular circuit you will use. Also you will study about CE amplifier circuit in the practical paper. Then you will construct this circuit. Okay. Now for a CE amplifier or for any amplifier we will define the gain of the amplifier as output by input. So the output voltage will be equal to output voltage V output will be equal to gain times input voltage. This is the relation. Now if you consider the signal, the signal is the part of the biasing circuit. ES is the part of biasing circuit and here you have the carrier signal input in the input input lana namula carrier signal apply cheyidud now this signal es il undavuna variations so signal es namukku ariyam ari ac wave aanu es ee es il adhaayathu signal voltage instantaneous value of the voltages il changes undavunnu anusarichittu biasing circuit il change undavu biasing circuit il changes gain il changes varuthu so output voltage will be gain times the input voltage and input voltage is actually carrier voltage. So here you have the carrier signal. So carrier high frequency signal on the input level. So that is the gain times output voltage. So output voltage you can then get output voltage you will get the modulated wave. AM modulated wave. So this is the AM modulated wave. So in the A load resistance you will have AM wave. So on the end brief I to paraya working. So what we have is the carrier signal ES is applied at the input of the amplifier 
and the modulating signal ES is applied in the emitter resistance circuit. The amplifier circuit amplifies the carrier wave by a factor gain factor A. So the output will be equal to some A times EC that is the output here. Now since the modulating signal ES is a part of the biasing circuit, it produces low frequency variations in the emitter circuit. This in turn causes variation in our gain A, in this gain A. The result is that amplitude of the carrier wave varies in accordance with the strength of the signal. Consequently, amplitude modulated output is obtained across the load resistance RL. So that is the working of a transistor AM modulator. Now let us discuss about the power in an amplitude modulated wave. So next I am going to discuss about power in an amplitude modulated wave. Power in AM wave. Okay. So we know that in any circuit the power dissipated will be equal to power is equal to voltage into current V P is equal to V into I and we have the Ohm's law V is equal to I R. So I can substitute for I is equal to V by R then the power delivered will be equal to this symbolizes the power dissipated will be equal to P is equal to V square by R where I substituted the current I here. So where R is the resistance here R represents the resistance. So this is the starting formula. Now for an amplitude modulated wave we have already discussed about the instantaneous value of the amplitude modulated wave and that is given by E C cos omega C T plus m e c by 2 cos omega c plus omega s t plus m e c by 2 cos omega c minus omega s t. So this is the instantaneous voltage and here we have three amplitude. First one is this EC amplitude EC, second is for the upper side band MEC by 2 and third is the for lower side band MEC by 2 amplitude. So the power output is distributed among these three amplitudes, three, three terms or these three components. And if I consider this is this term, this is the carrier power, carrier, this, uh, this term corresponds to carrier amplitude. So the carrier power will be given by carrier power will be given by v v square by r and here you will have e c by root 2 whole square by r okay now a question arises now one question arises evadunani r root 2 nalla factor vannathu because nammal ode ac ana consider cheyyunnu so i am considering the rms value of the voltage so rms value if you have peak value V0 then RMS value will be V0 by root 2. So other one another root 2 factor one other. So this is the carrier power. So first in the, in the numerator V square on then I have divided by R. Now if you do this you will get this is equal to EC square by 2R. Okay. Now let us consider the upper side band power upper side band power. The upper side band power means this term represents the upper side band. Upper side band frequency will be Fc plus Fs and this is the upper side band mode um, amplitude. So this upper side band power will be equal to Mec by 2. Then we have to divide by root 2 since RMS value is considered then v square on the square yanam, then by r so this will be equal to m square e c square by 2 square 4 over 2 4 into 2 8 r 
Similarly, you will get a lower sideband power term as lower similar the amplitude and nano vada virunnathu so idhe term enne varu m square ec square by 8r or if i consider the total sideband power appo namukku rendu term kuda ee rendu term kuda add cheyanam the total sideband power is equal to 2 times 2 times m square ec square by 8r that is equal to m square ec square by 4r okay so let us consider the total power in a amplitude modulated wave so the total power total power in am wave now total power will be equal to a sum of the carrier power plus p sideband sps represent p sideband p sideband means nan ee term avadukuna total sideband power ps so this will be equal to first term is first namukkullathu p pc is ec square by 2r and here you have m square ec square by 4r so ee rendu term nu enki ec square common aakam so ec square by r 2r common aaki ec square by 2r and then the remaining will be 1 plus m square by 2 1 plus m square by 2 so this term represents the total power so pt nu eduthu nan edana pt so this is the total power in a amplitude modulated wave okay now let us take the fraction so so what we have is the total power pt e pt is equal to ec square by 2r into 1 plus m square by 2 and the carrier power pc is equal to ec square by 2r and p sideband power ps is equal to m square ec square by 4r that is our get results now let us take the fraction of power carried in sideband so what is the fraction of power in sideband that means ps by pt total la etra etra percentage etra factor sideband la undu nammal calculate cheyina so ps ne nammal circuit ps inde formula eduda m ec square by 4r then pt pt is thala substitute cheya ec square by 2r into 1 plus m square by 2 common nam cancel cheyan padna terms cancel cheyam so ec square ec square cancel cheyam r r um cancel cheyam it two cancel cheyam but two varum so if you substitute those terms this will be m square by so m square by 2 by 2 plus m square by 2 ee term njan ingotu multiply edu now this 2 2 can be cancelled so our result is ps by pt is equal to m square by 2 plus m square so this is the ratio of power carried in side band to the power total okay now let us take some points the signal is carried in the side band so the useful power is in the side band then next point suppose this if we consider this relation the side band power depends upon the modulation factor m so let us take m is equal to 0 the modulation factor m is equal to 0 if modulation factor m is equal to 0 then p side band by p total will be equal to 0 by 2 that is equal to 0 okay so if modulation factor is 0 p side band is equal to 0 second case if modulation factor m is equal to 0.5 then p side band by p total will be equal to 0.5 by 2 so 0.5 square by 2 plus 0.5 square that is 0.5 square than 0.25 verum 0.25 by 2.25 and if you substitute this value this will be equal to 0.1111 that 
that means 11.1 percentage okay second case now let us consider another case suppose the modulation factor m is equal to 100 percentage or m is equal to 1 so ps by pt is equal to 1 square by 2 plus 1 square that is 1 by 3 so ps is equal to 1 by third of p total so idu kanikkunnathu modulation factor 100 percentage aanengil polum side band power total power inde 1 by third aanu adayathu if total power is 600 watt 600 watt aanu total power engil side band power inde 1 by third aavum that is 200 watt aayirikkum side band power and our signal is contained in the side band power so that means the efficiency of an amplitude modulation wave modulation is very low because the power in the side band is only 1 by 3rd even if the modulation factor m is equal to 1. So this is a disadvantage of disadvantage of a modulated wave. There are some other disadvantages also. Okay. So that's about